Uh, well, there's always lots going on in the MS field, so hard to pick um, a few, but if I had to, um, I would say that um, I'm really excited about the upcoming revisions to the uh, MS diagnostic criteria. Um, there was a large group of uh, clinicians and scientists that met um, a few months ago um, to discuss uh, proposed revisions. And um, I don't want to steal the thunder, but um, it does seem like there will be some pretty dramatic changes uh, coming up in the next year. And overall, I think this is really positive because um, I think the diagnostic criteria kind of take into account all of the um, emerging science on what we're thinking about MS. Um, and um, some of these changes will essentially um, allow for a diagnosis in appropriate uh, people. Um, but will also um, prevent misdiagnosis with some of the, um, you know, proposed tools that will be used. So, you know, I think it will be a pretty big um, change in comparison to prior uh, versions of the diagnostic criteria and all really um, positive changes and good news for um, people living with MS. You know, I think the, uh, the world was a bit disappointed with the very high level results that were reported for evobrutinib, which is the first BTK inhibitor that's been uh, tested in, in uh, people with MS, but we're still very excited about that class of therapy, um, just because um, at least the early clinical trial data, as well as um, many uh, kind of preclinical studies, um, show some intriguing findings, including the fact that um, it probably has a good effect on peripherally mediated inflammation, but um, there's also some intriguing studies showing that not only do these uh, drugs get into the brain, but they uh, may have an effect on some of the um, pathological processes that we think are um, you know, responsible for progression in MS. And so um, this year, we're due to hear um, likely the results of um, the, the second BTK inhibitor that has been widely studied in MS, which is tolibrutinib. And tolibrutinib was studied not just in relapsing MS, but in a dedicated trial of primary progressive MS, as well as a dedicated trial of non-active secondary progressive MS. Um, so it's likely that um, probably within this calendar year, we'll be hearing um, results of at least the uh, relapsing MS clinical trials. So there were two of them, Gemini 1 and 2, as well as the non-active secondary progressive MS clinical trial, which was called Hercules. So I'm actually really, really excited about that just because, um, you know, I know that the literature is evolving about how we classify MS, but the fact that there was a dedicated study looking at tolibrutinib um, in non-active SPMS, and you know, this is kind of the area in the field where we know there is a huge unmet clinical need. Um, so kind of keeping my fingers and toes crossed that um, hopefully we'll see an effect just because this would be so meaningful um, for people living with MS. Um, so that's really kind of um, the trial that I'm most excited about. Um, but, you know, there's many other emerging therapies, um, including uh, CD40 ligand and, and other therapies that are earlier on in development, but hopefully we'll continue to hear interesting results about those therapies. Um, well, you know, just getting back to the diagnostic criteria point, there's probably going to be some new MRI measures that are included um, that are, uh, you know, going to be um, included in, in the criteria to be used in specific situations. And, um, you know, locally, as well as with many collaborators around the world, um, our group has been working on some of these techniques. So, um, you know, if that happens, I'm really looking forward to having these uh, sequences available for use in clinical practice, because this is something that um, we haven't been able to do um, so far, just because um, some of these sequences are kind of designated as uh, research sequences. And so hopefully, if they're part of the diagnostic criteria, we'll be able to use them widely in clinical care. And this is something that, you know, our neurologists, as well as our neuroradiologists have really been wanting to do for a long time. So really looking forward to that practical piece, um, just having access to sequences that just help um, in clinical care with diagnosis and disease monitoring.